It is now my great honor to invite our commencement speaker to the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Robin Roberts. Okay, okay that was longer than my speech. Just so you know. Madam President, thank you very much. Oh my goodness. I, I, uh, love you. Uh, my fellow graduates, I, I have a gift for you. I'm not going to deliver a lengthy commencement speech, all right? Because truth be known, I can't remember the speaker at my graduation, okay? All I do remember is that I wanted a J-O-B, and I didn't have one. That's what I remember at my graduation. But I, I want you to know that, like the great Maya Angelou once said, that you may forget what people say, you may forget what people did for you, and you may forget some things that are said today and some things that were done, but never forget the feeling that you have right now. Never lose sight of that. The accomplishment, the accomplishment to be a college graduate. I know for some of you, you are following in a family tradition, and for many of you, you are starting that tradition, being the first in your family to receive a college degree. Just like my beloved mama and daddy. My daddy grew up in South Orange, New Jersey. He went on to be a Tuskegee Airman. He was the first in his family to go to college, as was my mother, who grew up in Akron, Ohio, the first in her family to go to college on a $100 scholarship. She went off to Howard University, where she met and fall in, fell in love with my daddy. And mama, mama was a resourceful woman because she didn't have much along the way as far as money is concerned. Her dormitory just happened to be next to the cafeteria. And she would look out the window, and when she saw my father to be walking up to the cafeteria, she would just bump into him. <laughs> and he was such a gentleman, being from Joyzee, he had to pay for her meal. And it is true, when most families are taught the three R's, we were taught the three D's. Discipline, determination, you gotta really sell it. The Lord, the Lord. That was the principles in our family. And I have to say, it's something else that my mother and father taught me, proximity is power. You can wish, hope, and pray all you want, but you have to put yourself in position for good things to happen to you. And you have done that. You have done that. I primarily learned that through playing sports. I am 5'10", I've been this height since the eighth grade. So I pretty much dominated back then on the basketball court. But as I got older, I realized that I was not gonna be that professional athlete, which, my, which my, was my first dream. I, I so dreamed of being, at first, a professional tennis player. And I would come off those hot, steamy courts down south, and I would curtsy, and I'd eat strawberries and cream, dreaming that one day I would be playing there at Wimbledon. But there's a little thing called, what's that? Oh, ability. <laughs> I had the heart and the desire, the discipline and determination, but not the ability. And so when I was in high school, I realized I was not going to achieve that first dream that I had to be a professional athlete. And that's when I decided that I'm going to be a sports journalist. That's going to be my way to fulfill a dream of being involved in sports. And no one wanted a 5'10 post player in college. I was the tallest player on my high school team, so I had to learn a new position so I could get that college scholarship, to get that college degree so I could go on to be a sports journalist. So on my own time, my senior year at Pass High, I got into that hot, steamy gym learning to go to my right and shoot a sweet 18-footer off glass, not because I wanted to be Southeastern Louisiana University's freshman of the year, please hold your applause, that was not my motivation. No, 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 no! I was putting myself in position for good things to happen to me. And when I was there at Southeastern, I realized that there were a lot of people who wanted to be a sports journalist, so I needed to get some practical experience. I went to the local radio station in Hammond, Louisiana, and I said, I, I'm studying communications, I play on the basketball team, I want to be your sports director, may I? And they said, tell you what, did some uh, research on you? Yeah, you're a good student, 
you can do that. Before your 8 o'clock class, you can do, you have your own sports talk show, do play-by-play, -play, high school football, basketball. And I think, great, right, this is, at, you know, ask and you shall receive. This is wonderful. And they said, okay, to be the sports director, you're going to have to DJ on the weekends. Now, you know being in college, come on now. And then they, and they said, did we tell you? We're a country music radio station. <laughs> I remember it oh so well, my friends, WFPR 14 Country, hometown country friends, it's Dr. Robin. <laughs> Robin Roberts here on a Saturday night playing the best and good music. Man. Come on, my fellow graduates. You know what it means to make sacrifices, to put, to dream big and focus small. And that's, that's what I was doing there at WFPR. And I remember when I'd get calls from radio listeners and from Bub, he's, you say, I'm, I'm going to bring you home to mama. I'm like, you do not want to bring me home to mama. Trust me, it's not going to end well for either one of us. <laughs> but it's all about finding the humor, finding a way to achieve that goal. So I'm there at Southeastern. I have the practical experience. People aren't exactly beating down the doors to sign someone like me to be on air delivering their sports news. I received one part-time position offer for $5.50 an hour, 30 hours a week, no benefits, to be a weekend sports anchor. I received many full-time offers in news, but that's not what I wanted. I wanted to be in sports, so I took that part-time position in sports for $5.50 an hour because I was dreaming big but focusing small. We got to see those day-to-day -day things that are ultimately get us to our goals. So I was there in, in small markets and then da-da-da, da-da-da, the worldwide leader in sports, going to ESPN. And all along the way, just like you, putting myself in position, dreaming big, focusing small, focusing on the solution, identifying the problem, but then focusing on the solution and keeping faith, family, and friends close to your heart. I have found everybody, everybody's got something. Everybody has issues, challenges, obstacles, however you want to label it. Everybody has something, including health challenges that I went through. When I learn about the graduates, and I did my, my homework. Bianca, beautiful woman, young woman. Yes. The, the homelessness for seven years that she overcame, losing her mother while she was entering college, having to take care, not having to, wanting to take care of her two brothers who had serious health issues, and she's one of our fellow graduates today. One of my colleagues at my production company, Rock and Robin Productions, by the way, one of my colleagues, Gabe, he sent me an email and he said, Yo, Rob. No, he didn't really say it like that, but he said, My god sister, Verna, is a graduate today. She had to put her dreams on hold because she was raising her son, who's now a teenager, and Verna is receiving her degree alongside of us today. That's, and I, I could go on and on and on. Everybody's got something, everybody. And I, I tell you what, people, if everyone, everyone in this room, everyone here, put their problems in a big old bowl in the middle, you would look, see your problem, and you take yours back. You would. You take, you go, I didn't know you, you who are you going? Well, I didn't, oh gosh, I, nice prayer and everything, but I didn't know you were going through all that. <laughs> you know, you, you don't know what someone else is going, but I do know this. Everyone faces that, and that's not the tragedy. If you don't take the time to understand the purpose and meaning of why you are being placed in that situation, then you're learning this invaluable lesson that you were meant to be taught. And it's so encouraging to know that Everybody here, your family, your friends, the faculty, everyone here wants so much for you to live out what your dreams are. I said I didn't make it to Wimbledon as a tennis player. When I got there for ESPN and had a microphone in my hand instead of a tennis racket, check. Your dreams may not look like you think they are right now. When I was sitting where you are, I had no idea that I would go on to be a news anchor 
and a morning show host at Good Morning America that to have the privilege every morning to say, Good morning, America. You don't know what your dreams, what your, but I do know this. It takes courage. It takes strength to believe that the best is yet to come. Yes. And we are all just a little bit stronger than we think we are. We all are. We have that within us. And when, when fear knocks, and it will, let faith answer the door when fear knocks. And lastly, I say this to my fellow graduates today, that there may be some times in your challenges that you face that you feel that you don't, you don't see God's hand. But never question nor doubt God's plan for you. Blessings, y'all. Thank you.